But I, I really, I'm going to always do this, I believe. Uh, how many of you came this morning and you were expecting? Yeah, I like that. Let me ask you one more time. How many of you came this morning expecting? That was a little bit better. Okay. So how many of you came expecting this morning? All right. I like that. That's a whole lot better. Praise God. Well, we're excited. Um, last night we had a great meeting, and, and some people really got touched by the Holy Spirit. And I believe that it's going to continue this morning and tonight. I want to already invite you to come this evening because we're having an evening service. We usually don't do that, but I know it's going to be a powerful time in the Lord. So, uh, so I'm I'm not going to have a well. I do need to say one thing. I wasn't going to say much this morning and just get right into the service, but I want to recognize something. And and on Monday morning we lost uh, a church member. Uh, Mark Nelson went to be with the Lord at, at 2.30 in the morning on Monday. And, you know, Mark was a wonderful guy. I've, you know, he, he was a friend to many. He was a mentor to a lot of people. And so we're going to have his celebration of life this Friday at, at 11 o'clock. So you're all welcome to come. And afterwards, there's a reception in, in the fellowship hall. So we'll just come and uh, celebrate Mark's life. Hallelujah. May I pray this morning? Father, we just thank you for this time today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you're here. I believe, I believe, Father, that you're going to touch lives today. I, I just thank you, Father God, that we came here with our hearts filled with excitement. And, and we're believing, Father God, that this morning will be a special morning that lives will be changed, lives will be touched. Father God, I just thank you. If there's any ailment in anyone, Father God, that the anointing of God, that the Holy Spirit will hover over this place today and change their lives. Father, I thank you that you bless Aaron and, and Jim for, for being here. And Father, I just thank you for a great day in the Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we have a, a one announcement this morning. Go ahead. Hello. Speaking from back here at the keyboard. <laughs> Wednesday night is our New Creation Church Culture Impact Team. And uh, we just invite you to come to join us 7 p.m. It's going to be good. You know, the uh, Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. But with all that getting, get understanding. So these nights that we're getting together uh, are nights of encouragement, of, of uh, equipping, equipping the saints. Uh, the church has a very important role in this nation, in this world, and in this day in which we're so privileged to live. So join us Wednesday night, 7 p.m., Culture Impact Team. Blessings to all of you. Amen. Amen. How many of you came two weeks ago? Several people did. It, it was, it's enlightening. It's a really good thing, so I invite all of you guys to come on every other Wednesday. It's awesome. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to receive an offering. And, and your regular tithe, we'll, we always receive that on Sunday morning. And you know, the Bible is so clear about the tither, the tither. If we bring the tithe into the storehouse, that God, he does two things. He pours us out a blessing that we can't receive at all. But then it also says this, the Bible does, about, about it. It says that, and he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Now, everything that we do is by faith. Isn't that right? If you, if you receive that promise by faith, you never do this. Don't just put your offering in, in the bucket or on the tray or whatever it is. Never do that. When you, when you do that, it's almost like you don't honor that offering. But when you speak the word of God over it, it's alive. When you speak that promise over every time, everything that you do needs to just honor God. And when you do that, God will honor you. So
so when you put that in, your tithe, stand on those promises. Those two things, are, those promises are so powerful. Your house will be protected, and God will bless your house. So, so we're going to do that this morning, but we're also going to receive at this time, if you, if you would like to give an offering to our guests, um, Jim and Aaron Hockaday, I, you're going to just, I'm telling you, I'm so excited about this morning because last night was so powerful. And so I want you to open up your hearts and ask God what you would do to bless this ministry as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we give to them, God, again, it pressed down, shaking together, and running over self, God, given to our bosom. So, so I'm just going to take a minute, and, and I'm going to pray for you, and I want you to, to just ask God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you that you move across us this morning, move across here, and, and that you, you uh, move on our hearts, Father God. We want to do what you want us to do, Heavenly Father. Father, I just thank you that when we're obedient and we walk with you, Father God, that you bless us. You order our steps and you bless our families. Father, you rebuke the devourer. And Father, I just thank you that we're blessed in every way. Your word says we're blessed coming in and blessed going out, that we are the head and not the tail. We're above only and not beneath. And we give you praise for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you, uh, we have offering envelopes and, and there's a little section there that says guest speaker. If you're online, there's another option that says guest speaker. Or if you, if you give by text, it'll send you to the NCC app and you have the opportunity to give to a special speaker there. Okay. All right. I don't know where I'm at. Oh, now it's an announcement video. Hey, New Creation family. We've been talking about the launch of our small group semester for a few weeks now, and it's finally here. This week, our groups officially start meeting, and my question to you is, are you involved in a group yet? If you're not, I want to tell you that there's all types of benefits to being in a group, but one of my favorites is that people encounter God through the context of relationships. I cannot begin to tell you how my life has been changed when I've connected with people of like faith to encourage, to mentor me, and to pray with me. So now that we've established why you need to sign up for a group, it's time to talk about how to sign up for a group. The best way to sign up for a group are either our website or our church app. Now, if you haven't downloaded the church app yet, now is a great time. Just go to your app store on your iPhone or your Android and type in New Creation Longmont. And once you find it, it's kind of a pink looking app, go ahead and install it. On our website, uh, you can go to newcreation.net slash groups and you can find all available groups to sign up for. Now, once you find the right group for you, click the group name and then join group. You might be asked to create an account or to sign in before you join. And for those of you who give online, your account credentials will be the, be the exact same as your giving credentials. Now, let's talk about the app for a minute. Once you've downloaded the app, please sign in or log in using those same giving credentials. Then clicked on the connect tab at the very bottom. Now at the top of that page, you'll see an arrow pointing up to the top of the screen. Now click that icon that that arrow is pointing to. Then go over to discover. Here you can view all groups available at New Creation. Just click the group that is right for you and then click join group. And once you join uh, with the app, you'll have direct access to talk with all the group leaders and all the members, and it's really that simple. I can't wait to hear about all the stories of people encountering God through meeting together in these groups. And I just wanna say thank you for getting involved with groups here at New Creation Church.
Well, everybody go ahead and stand on up to your feet. I really do encourage you to join a, join a small group. Man, small groups changed my life. Just a connection with God. A connection with God um, through other people, through relationships is really, really valuable, really important. So I do encourage you to get involved there. Well, we're going to worship God together. Let's raise our voices. Let's raise our hands. Just begin to praise God. Just, just put faith in the atmosphere right now. Father, we believe you at your word tonight. We believe you at your word today. This morning, right now, God, we believe you, God. We believe that if, uh, if we came in sick, that we're going to leave well. We're going to leave healed and whole. God, you're the healer. You're a healing God. You're a saving God. You're a delivering God. And we just thank you, Father, that right now you're stirring it in our faith. You're stirring it in our hearts, Father, right now. Hallelujah. You're anointing because it's not by our striving. It's not by our might or our by power, but by the Spirit of God that things are going to happen today. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe it? Come on. Come on. Stir faith. Stir faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're here. You're here. You're here. Yes, you are God. You're here right here among us, God. You're here, and your anointing is present. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Right now, we'll worship with everything that we've got. Hallelujah. Jesus. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've already won come on we've already won the battle through jesus there is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you there is no army with the power to conquer truth with the power to conquer truth you've always been with us every battle you've already won we've already won come on show me one thing you can't do show me a mountain you can't move He's the God of the breakthrough, and anything is possible. Yeah. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters He can't part. He's the God of the breakthrough, anything is possible. It's possible. There is a kingdom. That's advancing at the speed of light And in his kingdom oh, Every dead thing is bound to rise Oh God our Redeemer He is faithful to revive Oh he will revive Show me one thing he can do Show me a mountain you can move. He's the God of the breakthrough. And anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me waters he can walk. He's the God of the breakthrough. And anything is possible. It's possible. What's impossible with us? is possible with God. Stir faith today, guys. Come on. Sing all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will
will crush disappointment Show me one thing you can't do Show me a mountain you can't move He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible for us is possible with God. Come on, it's possible. Hallelujah. Just look up. Just look to God this morning. I believe He's going to meet us our needs. He's going to meet our needs. sometimes requires action faith sometimes requires action it doesn't sometimes it always actually requires action God is always giving us a step he's always giving us a chance for obedience he's always gonna give us a step out a step out of the boat moment boy there's step out of the boat moments all over the place this morning and what I mean by that is Peter's analogy or Peter stepping out of the boat and walking on water. Brother Jim talked about that last night in detail and talked about that 11, at least 11 other people stayed in the boat. Only one got out. Come on, come on. Can we be the congregation? Can we be the, the audience? Can we be the group of people that actually steps Come on, can we be the one? Can we be the one? And you say, well, Willie, what is that? Like? We're not on a boat right now. We're not. But God is asking you to step out in some way. And the music that we play, it's not just feel good. We're not trying to just, ah, we'll sing a few songs and we're, we're going to give it over to, to, to Brother Jim to minister. They're to stir faith there to get you to the place where you can step out of the boat and to say yes I'll do it I'll do it I'm out of the boat right now and I'm so uncomfortable and I have no idea what to do it might be a shout you've maybe have never shouted in church before but he might be saying let out the biggest shout he might say that to you and what do you do do it please do it it would be amazing not from just a participation from a faith aspect, but your life will be changed. Your life will be changed when you hook up with God. Amen? Y'all too. I'm talking to the band as well. It's, it's everybody. It's everybody. I, I want life change, guys. I want life change, and I want God to move, and I want God to move in my life just as much as I want God to move in your lives. Come on. He is moving. Come on, Willie, it's today, not tonight. Come on, speak it right. He's moving in Jesus' name. Let's worship. God, we put our expectation on you. We'll step out. We'll step out of the boat. All my words fall short I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do but every song must end, and you never do. So let's lift this up. 
So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. Biggest hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, the highest form of praise. Oh, hallelujah, the highest form. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Sing it one more time. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs.
just want to be with you. That's our heart's cry. We just want to be with you. everybody. Father, we thank you and praise you for a time, a small space of time, just to be together, worship you, to watch you move, to watch you manifest, that you might heal, set free anyone in this room with any type of physical ailment, mental ailment. We thank you, Father, first and foremost, there's someone in this room that's never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior may the service today the things that are said the things that you do may that Lord God make an impression upon their heart that they'd be saved today they give their life to Jesus that they would receive eternal life in their heart Lord we just believe in the wonderful working of the Holy Ghost and Lord you put so many things in my heart I know that someone's heart is being healed this morning there's that uh, difficulty in the wrist, the corporal tunnel syndrome. I, I thank you, Lord, that's being healed this morning. Someone's shoulder is being healed this morning. I thank you, Lord, right in the back of the neck on up into the, the uh, skull, Lord, the pain that is there. That's being removed today. And someone's feet, that there's been difficulty with the feet. I thank you, Lord, that those feet will catch on fire even this morning and there'll be a healing in those feet. There's so many things that are happening, Lord, even the veins and the way the blood moves through the veins. I thank you, Lord, there's an opening to the veins so that there's no restriction. We give you praise today that all restrictions go, that intestines are made perfect and whole. Lord, we thank you that so much more is being done even in this small space of time we yield ourselves to you we thank you for jesus we lift up his name and in that wonderful name we pray amen and amen well you may be seated this morning thank you so much for coming the worship team for just doing such a wonderful job just to bring us all consciously to a place where we love the lord amen I love what worship is able to do just to get our minds free from the world, get our thoughts free from what may have come with you from home, that may have happened with you while you were driving, especially if you were on I-25. <laughs> you know, it really have to detox constantly from the world, and the way to do that is to turn your face toward the Lord. You remember the old song, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face? And then what? And the things of this earth, what? Will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. So sometimes we work really hard to try 
to not think of the world, well, the opposite would be just to think of God. Amen? And get caught up thinking about God. Use your imagination to see Him. That imagination is that creative part inside of you that God placed there so that you can move from one world to the other. God believes that your belief is reality. Do you? God believes that your imagination is reality. Do you? Jesus presented a very interesting scenario when, you know, confronting individuals who were trying to present themselves so holy and so pure, and he even made some comments like this. If you've even looked upon a woman to commit adultery, you've already committed it. What does that seem to indicate? God considers our imaginations to be real. He says things like over in Romans chapter 10, he that believes has. How can a belief make you have something? Because God believes that your beliefs are realities. So what did we come believing this morning? That we were going to leave the same way that we came? That we were going to leave with that same pain, that same sickness? Do we see ourselves more sick than we do healed? Because we could come up and be ministered to, and technically, according to the way the Lord sees you, the power of God just smote that sickness or that trouble, that disease, but then you could turn around and go right back to medicine, talking the way that you were before, grabbing a hold of some type of device that helped you to maybe get down to the front, and so on and so forth. We see that all the time. Amen. So I want to encourage you today. Our time of worship was to get our eyes upon Jesus and get them off of ourselves so that the things of that world would become more clear. It's amazing the word focus actually means clarity. So to have focus means things become more clear. It's kind of like, you know, you're focusing your camera because it's fuzzy. Things are distorted. So you focus until you bring them into what? Clarity. Years ago, when we actually used to use the radios in our car, I don't know how many still do, but you know, we'd have a knob that you would tune into a station, and sometimes you were just a little bit off and there'd be static. And so you'd focus it, you'd tune it in until it was clear. Sometimes you'd go to the right until you hit static, to the left until you hit static, and then you'd move right in the middle. And ah, that sounds really good. Clarity focus. Well, this morning we're going to focus and begin to imagine and begin to see and begin to feel the other world. If it weren't real, then we would almost sound a little new age, like we're trying to create something out of nothing, just with our minds. But if heaven is real, angels are in this room, the presence of the Lord is living in us and upon us, in this sanctuary, then what we begin to focus on will come into clarity and you'll begin to sense the presence of God in these senses, not just your spiritual ones. You know, you do have spiritual senses. Wouldn't that be horrible if we got to heaven, the most beautiful fruit that you've ever seen in your whole entire life, and you said to an angel, do you think I could have something? Well, it's all for you. And you went over and grabbed that fruit and took a big old huge bite, but there was no taste. And you walked through the most beautiful garden, with flowers like you've never seen, color beyond your wildest imagination, and you reached down to smell, but there was no smell. A thousand member angel choir was singing with such amazing, uh, you know, energy, but you couldn't hear it. How horrible. Wouldn't that be terrible? Aren't you thankful that we can hear, see, smell, taste, and touch in the spiritual realm just like you can in this one? And if you allow your mind to begin to go past what you're feeling in this world, you'll start to feel something in that world which will cure what you feel in this world. 
Come on, I just wanted to talk to you just for a little second here before we get to a scripture. It's good just to get all on the same page here this morning. People's lives are going to be impacted in just a few moments with healing in their bodies. In fact, I believe some of that's taking place right now. People's feet catching on fire. Problems in your feet. Something's taking place even right now with those feet. Someone's heart's being healed. There's valves in the heart that are starting to work like they didn't work a few moments ago. Someone's circulation is starting to work, and you should begin to feel some warmth in your body where before you were feeling nothing but cold. I know something about that. When I first married my wife, boy, I tell you what, she'd snuggle over and put her feet on me. felt like a, just a chunk of ice. I thought to myself, can somebody actually be alive and have such cold feet? And she promised me that she had wore, you know, her little socks and stuff before she came to bed. Oh, gosh. Well, those days have changed, praise the Lord. You know, she doesn't, isn't cold like that anymore. Oh, the Lord is so good. Come on, let's just wait for another moment. Father, I thank you and I praise you. I can see that heart being healed right now. And it's so wonderful because that individual from this very moment will begin to, even in this service, experience strength and a change in their physical body as their heart begins to pump like it ought to and strength comes back to that muscle and their body begins to experience oxygen and energy through the blood. I thank you, Lord God, that someone's shoulder is no longer in pain and they can begin to move it backwards and forwards and even up above their head without pain right now. These are just a couple of little things that are beginning to happen and we just give you praise for so much more in Jesus' wonderful name. All right. Well, it's so good to be with you. We had a wonderful time last night. We look forward to what the Lord has for us today. If you'd like to, you can turn over to John chapter 3 and verse 16. I think we all know that scripture. I learned that as a little boy in a Baptist church. We learned all kinds of things in the Baptist church. Amen. Wonderful scriptures. I was even four years of age, five years of age, and I learned the Roman road. That was just a part of our Bible study, you know, for Sunday school. Uh, Back in that day, you know, the days where I went to church there, we'd have Sunday school at 9 o'clock, and then you'd have your your worship service, of course, at 10.30 or so. And so everybody went to Sunday school and then to church. And then, of course, you came Sunday night to church, and then you didn't miss Wednesday night. Amen. And there was a Bible Institute on Monday night. Praise the Lord. We were faithful churchgoers. Amen. So I'm real thankful to see all of you here. Faithful Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Someone ought to get excited about the fact, thank God you are here. (laughs) But let's go to the next step of beginning to receive something that you can carry with you all week long. Now I'm going to make this statement over in 1 Thessalonians. Don't turn there. 523. It says... Pray every once in a while. Pray when you feel like it. Pray once a year. You know, that's kind of like the world, you know. I mean, how important are moms? They're so important. Moms ought to be hugged or something ought to be said nice to them every single day. But the world only gives you one day a year to be able to honor a mom. (laughs) And dads are so important. And now we're seeing the effect, you know, over years and years of of looking at homes where maybe they didn't have a dad in the home versus homes that had that father stability. Dads are extremely important. And we ought to, you know, at least shake a dad's hand, you know, as a son to a dad, you know, my dad always give me a forearm. How you doing, son? Boom. You know, his forearms were as big as my body, you know, so... It usually knocked me across the room, but that was a love, a love tap, you know. But, you know, the world only lets you tell dad once a year that he's important. I mean, goodness, we only get twice a year to tell Jesus he's important. Once that he was born and another time that he died. And they just talk really about his death. They don't talk as much really about his resurrection and ascension. Are you getting my drift here? See, if it's up to the world, there's limitations and boundaries, and we're constantly in this time frame of, I don't have enough time. Oh, no, I've got to hurry here. But, you know, the Bible says, wait upon the Lord. It says, be still and know that I am God. Boy, those years of seemingly having time enough to be still, having the ability to be quiet, seem to be moving right past us. 
As statistically, in America, the average adult can only hold their focus for six to eight seconds. See, you've already changed twice. <laughs> Isn't that something? Now you'd say, well, what happened, uh, you know, our day and time? What happened to the kind of American or the kind of, you know, human being on this planet where we seem to lose our focus? We're being conditioned by the world. This is the world's way of living to be scatterbrained, to be divided in your attentions so you can't focus on any one thing. I mean, even ungodly people with the Tower of Babel that came together with one purpose and one heart and one mind, God said, anything they set their heart on, they shall accomplish, for they are united. And that wasn't even with, like, godly intentions. Hello? Hello? Do you think the devil doesn't understand that? The power of a human being made in the image and likeness of God with the creative nature of God in him, that if he were to set his mind on the fact that Jesus Christ took my infirmity and bore my sickness, that the sickness and the disease that was present would diminish and disappear and no longer be present just by you setting your focus on the fact that what Jesus did is a greater reality than what your body is feeling. And you can tell whether someone believes in that by what they do. Hallelujah. Amen. My wife and I have started a healing center in Castle Rock, Colorado called Healing by Design. And our intentions, of course, is we're in a hotel right now, uh, are as soon as we can get our own building... And we would then also have associated with the healing center a laboratory. We actually have a couple of doctors that are prepared to help us start that laboratory because they've started theirs and they know the process and what must be done, you know, legally through uh, the state. As they said, it would be somewhere between a three and six month process to get the laboratory up and going. But we'll have a team of 10 doctors in Atlanta, Georgia, that will be able to give diagnosis to all the reports that we send them through the blood work and through the MRIs, x-rays, and ultrasounds. You say, why would you have a laboratory attached to your healing center? Because we've greatly surpassed the day where people would actually believe you if you said we had 100 people last night healed by the presence and power of God. Glory to God. No, no, no. Even in the church, they'd say, well, if I don't see it, I won't believe it. Come on, that's how far we've sunk today. So what do we need? Irrefutable proof. Doctor's verification. For really, truly, in the heart and mind of almost every human being on the planet, the doctors are really the gods of this age. Well, that didn't go over very well. Maybe no one will come tonight, praise the Lord. But come on, we're just saying things that are actually accurate. Even in the church world, I'm, this is not condemnation. This is why we're doing the healing center, is to bring an awareness back to the church and then to the world that you can really put your trust in Jesus and Jesus alone. Can you get that quote that you gave me from uh, A.W. Tozier? This is a man that was born in, uh, he died in 63. He was born in 18... 89 or something like that. So he died at about 70 years of age. How about just send it to me, the one you sent to me on the text. Thanks, huh? This is really good. Uh, let's see. Pseudo-faith always arranges a way out to serve in case God fails it. Real faith knows only one way and gladly allows itself to be stripped of any second way or makeshift substitute. For true faith, it is either God or total collapse. 
I'm going to read that again. That didn't seem to really go over very well. I was looking at some of your faces and it scared me. Amen. Let me read that again. Pseudo faith always arranges a way out to serve in case God fails it. Real faith knows only one way and gladly shows itself to be stripped of any second way or makeshift substitutes. For true faith is either God or total collapse. Wow. Hallelujah. That kind of sounds like the song, I believe you're my healer. I believe. What's the next part? You are all I need. Remember that? That sounds like that. We want to, this is our goal, is to, with this healing center, raise the expectancy back in the church. Think about how fun it will be for those who are instantly healed, and we then record that through the laboratory. Now think with me along this line. What about if we have someone there, we're training them to minister healing, and they've never ministered healing before, and they lay hands on someone, they cannot tell whether or not something happened, but they believe in their heart that Jesus is healing that person. We take that person over to the laboratory, draw blood, send it down to the doctors in Atlanta, Georgia, and they send back a report that over 50% of the cancer cells have disappeared. And you take that report, first and foremost, to the guy that laid hands on that individual and say, look at what happened when you lay hands on that individual. Can you imagine their eyes going like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? And then you ask them, do you think you can lay hands on them again and give them another 50%? (laughs) Oh man, when, when are they coming next? Well, they'll be here this afternoon. All right, I'm ready. Now, bring in the person. Do you believe, do you realize 50% of your cancer has already disappeared? It has Yes, it has. This is the doctor's report. Do you believe if we laid hands on you one more time or two more times, it'll be completely gone? Absolutely. Now, do you see what's going to start happening? We'll use medical science to bring faith back into the church. The kind that will strip itself of every substitute, step out on the naked void and believe God. I like how Mark Henkin says it, swing over hell on a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye. (laughs) Doesn't that sound just like awesome? The Cotton Patch translation of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, now faith is betting your life on the unseen realities of God. That's what I believe. Amen? Isn't God so good? Take your Bibles right now. Let's just look over here in John chapter 3 and verse 16. And you know this verse. In the Passion Translation, it says, For here is the way God loved the world. He gave His only unique Son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in Him will never perish but experience everlasting life. As we read that last part, that you're experiencing everlasting life, just off the top of your head, what's the first thought that comes to you when you hear everlasting life? And I would say probably it would be the duration of life. In other words, it's everlasting life. But that's not exactly what this means at all. It has nothing to do with duration. And the reason why is because every single human being will live forever. It's just a matter of where. And that alone should be an altar call this morning. You will live forever forever. And someone says, well, where am I going to live forever? Well, that has to do with whether you've received Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. And no man shall come to the Father without Him. You mean there's no other way? There is no other name under heaven where men must be saved but Jesus. For all will fall to their knees and confess that Jesus Christ 
is Lord in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Everyone will confess. Every human being will live forever. For being a human being is not being clothed with flesh. Being a human being is the spirit that was breathed into your flesh at the time of your conception. Not when the baby's born so that you can take the baby one month before it's born and have people in New York clapping and laughing as though they accomplished something by aborting a baby one month or right then just two weeks before it's born. That sounds like the hideousness of an evil called Satan himself mocking God that we now pass laws that can take a baby right before it's actually born. Wow, look at the day we live in. Is not hell and evil absolute? Ask somebody with cancer with one month to live in hospice if it's not absolute. So what does that say? But the necessity for us to be just as absolute about God. This eternal life he's talking about is not a duration of time. It's the quality of existence that you have now been experienced or imparted into your spirit. Wow! We really are a new creation. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. One translation said a new species of being. You mean God created a new species? He did. What's it called? It's called a believer. What does a believer do? He believes. <laughs> what happens when he believes? All things are possible to him that believes. Is that normal, natural, regular to be expected for a believer? Yes! Do cats meow? They do it all day long. Is it normal for a cat to meow? Yes. Would you have problems if it barked? <laughs> what we do without even thinking, what we do like breathing air, we believe. A believer is a noun. Believing is the verb. I did get that right, didn't I? Yes! I am a believer. What do I do? I believe. What happens when I believe? All things are possible to me who believes. Why? There is a creative nature inside of my being. God lives in me. I am filled and possessed with eternal life. Wow. Hallelujah. Is it possible? Oh, it's more than possible. It's a fact. Jesus came that we might be possessors of eternal life. What does this eternal life promise you? Wow. One of the things it promises you is you will live with him in glory forever. It is the transportation system for a human being to be transported from this life to the next life. But if we only think of the next life and we're not there yet, then we've missed out on thinking of this one. Jesus didn't come to give us the hope of a future and leave us the same while we're here. When Jesus came on the earth, he was the only one that possessed eternal life on the planet. The only one whose nature was perfect before God. The only one in whom God dwelt. And look at what he did with that life. 
He used it on purpose as someone who was skilled in his craft. He would multiply a little boy's lunch and feed 10,000 plus people. He used it to walk on water. His first miracle, I mean, he'd been waiting for it all his life. No, he hadn't. He wasn't even considering his first miracle. He was tired after working in the carpenter shop all week long, and he went to a funeral. And his mother came to him and said, Jesus, they've run out of wine. Do something. And he said, Mother, it's not my time. What does your concern have to do with me? Why was Mary concerned? Why did Mary have servants of whom if Jesus told them to do something, they would obey him? Unless Mary happened to be the wedding coordinator. Think about it. Who's concerned about whether you have enough? The wedding coordinator. It's her job to have enough wine. Does she have people to help her? Absolutely. If she tells them, do this, would they do it? Yes. Why? They are under her authority. And her authority is only given by those who actually what? Are those getting married? Does she have responsibility? Yes. Jesus basically said, what does your responsibility have to do with me? And I think if I role-played this, I'd say it like this. She went over to Jesus and grabbed his ear like this. And she said, I've been waiting on this for 30 years. Ever since the angel said, your son shall be called Emmanuel, God with us, the Savior of the world. Now you are going to do something. You just choose how but we need more wine. <laughs> and Jesus obviously didn't complain because the very next thing that he said was, put water in the pots. And they did. Now think about that. You weren't even ready. You were put on the spot. And yet you could still, what, have a miracle when you're filled with eternal life. It's the creative nature of God himself deposited in your spirit so that you can use it at your will. It's a Wednesday night. I'd been traveling. I was tired. I got home, and I didn't even want to go to church. I mean, I was in church all week. Give me a break just because it's Wednesday. Why do I have to go? Except my wife. Of course, she's timely. Everything is always perfect in place. And so I knew I probably couldn't get away with just acting like I don't want to go. So all of a sudden, at the proper time, I hear the word, we are going to church, aren't we? To which I said, sure. And back in that day, it wasn't acceptable to wear jeans in church. Of course, Pastor really did a switcheroo on me. Last night, I wore, you know, faded jeans and a faded shirt. It even had a spot in the middle that, that was, uh, if you didn't notice, that was, um, what's it called? Bleached. You know, I mean, it wasn't pretty. But I wore it, and she looked at me. Whoa, you're going to wear that? I said, well, Pastor, he's wearing jeans and just a shirt. I know that. And I get here, and he's all sp spruced up. I said, look at you. He said, well, I wore that because I knew you were going to look nice. <laughs> well, I guess I don't then. But he said, it's all right. It's Colorado. <laughs> Amen. So I decided, just rebellious, I'm wearing my jeans. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to have a little rebellion in me because I really don't want to go. I'm wearing my jeans. So I wore, we got there, and um, 
there was a couple seats in the very back. It was a long auditorium. And, and some of the ushers immediately when they saw us said, oh, we've got a spot right down front for you. I said, no, we don't want, we don't go. No, we're fine. And she said, let's sit up here. I said, no, we're sitting right back here in the very back. So we sat down and, you know, the seats, they're just so comfortable. And especially if you're a little worn out and tired, you know. So it didn't take long, you know, after worship. And during worship, in fact, right in the middle of one of the songs, Janet Brzee, she stopped and said, kind of like a little bit like Willie did, except Willie was a little nicer with, you know. But she stopped and said, there's a bunch of you that are just standing out there like you don't even want to be here. I thought, well, I guess she saw me all the way in the back in my jeans. You need to enter in. And so I thought, all right, you know, because it doesn't take much to make a change. So I entered in and worship them was fine. And then we sat down, a little bit of announcements, and the pastor started preaching, and it didn't take but just a few moments, and all of a sudden I'm starting to feel that feeling. And I pinched myself a couple of times just to wake up. And I'm fighting it the best I could. And I had one of those hor oh, horrible experiences where your head starts to nod. Then, then it nodded so far back. It snapped back like this. And my eyes were just wide open like that. And when that happened, I heard these words. Well, there's Jim Hockaday in the back. He'll tell you a story that confirms what I'm saying. Come on up here, Jim, right now. And I looked over at Erin so she could tell me where he was, and she wasn't even fighting it. She was gone. At least I was fighting it. Talking about Jesus, you know, he wasn't real prepared for that first miracle. What does your concern have to do with me? Leave me alone. No, you're going to do it. Okay. So I started walking down. And it wasn't a fast walk. It was a father, forgive me, for I've sinned type of walk, you know. <laughs> what, 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 please, could I do right now to encourage you to let me know exactly what he's talking about? <laughs> because you know I have no idea. And I'm walking down there in my jeans as a sign to my rebellion to be here in the first place. And so, Lord, you know, just thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. And I just praise you, Lord, and I'm walking. And I just had to get to the point where i getting close to the front. You just have to give me this. And I turned the corner, and just like that, I knew what to say. And I got up and I said what I needed to say. And right when I said it, I said, there is someone here whose lungs need to be healed. I said, they're not even halfway breathing or holding capacity. And a little girl that was 12 years of age, she came up and she only had about 20% of her lungs capacity. The doctor said the disease in her lungs would kill her within a year. And she came up, I laid hands on her, and I didn't wait. I grabbed her hand, and I took off running. Her dad freaked out. He ran right behind us, and we ran around that whole room. And when we got back, she wasn't even breathing hard. The testimony came back four days later that her lungs were 100% when they went to the doctor. And I tell you that because in the midst of thinking that I'm ready to preach because I prepared so much and God knows I helped him out by being so ready. Now don't get me wrong, we have a part in this to be prepared. The greatest preparedness is not only to understand the truth of the Word, but to be in direct connection to the presence of the Lord that you walk in on a regular basis. But in, in, in those times where we feel like we've helped God, sometimes those services are the worst because we're in the way because we think we ought to deserve by what we've done a special service. And yet I've had services where maybe I didn't have time to prepare as much, but what I'm getting to is I am still filled with eternal life. It's still in me. 
I am what I am because of him. And he lives in me because of him. And I will be able to do what I do because of him. It all goes back to him. I even love him because he first loved me. Someone's hip's being healed right now in the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for it. If you'd like to experiment with that new hip, there are different ways to do that. There are backflips, there are somersaults. <laughs> or you could just revert to just normal walking. But praise the Lord, don't sit there and make me find you so that I have to get you to experiment with your new hip. Are you receiving a new hip right there, ma'am? No, okay. I was thinking, wow, she's quick to respond. That's awesome. <laughs> Real quickly, I'll tell you, I was, in, I was in Virginia, you know, in the country. The country of Virginia. It was really country. And, and I was in this church. There were about 500 people there. And it was kind of just like this where there was theater seating going all the way back and then a big platform. And I'm 15 minutes into my sermon, and all of a sudden this woman toward the back, she puts on this big, huge coat, grabs at least three books in her arms, puts her purse on her shoulder, and takes her cane and goes like this and goes from the middle all the way to the aisle. She gets into the aisle, and then she turns, and she starts to use her cane, and she starts to leave. And, and I just, I guess I became offended. I don't know. And I thought to myself, that's all you're going to give me to decide whether or not this will be a service that could change someone's life? And the more I thought of that, and I'm preaching at the same time, but I had that thought going in, the more it just irked me until I said, uh-uh, I am not letting this happen. And I jumped off the platform and ran up that aisle and caught her about two rows from being to the foyer, tapped her on the shoulder, and she turned around, ah, like that, because it was the preacher. And I said, where do you think you're going? I said, give me that cane. Snatched it right out of her hand. I said, if you're going to leave and leave within just 15 minutes of me being able to preach, I said, then you're not going to leave sick and you're not going to leave needing this cane. And I went pop like that to her forehead, popped back. I said, now be healed. And she, when I hit her, she got into that old Pentecostal, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. She said, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. And she started dancing around and she was healed. She says, wow. That feels great. That feels great. I said, now leave if you have to. She said, I was just going to the bathroom. <laughs> ah, if I told you how many times I put my foot in my mouth in 30 years of ministry, we wouldn't have enough time to finish our sermon today. Amen. It's just really good that Jesus is so loving and so amazingly kind. All right, real quickly, just some thoughts. And then we'll move on fast and minister to people. Jesus came for everyone to receive eternal life. Eternal life is the cure for eternal death. Eternal life is the divine nature that is the cure for the sin nature. So once you receive the divine nature, you can no longer have a sin nature. You can't be both at the same time, which does away with so much wrong theology through the years that seem to allow you to be saved, but I'm still dealing with this sin nature person that I am. Well, you can't be too. Get saved, and then you'll no longer be a sin nature being. In other words, the moment the divine life of God comes into you, instantaneously, everything of evil is removed from your life. In the scriptures, Zoe, the life of God, is mentioned 170 times. Uh, excuse me. Life is mentioned 170 times. 125 of those are Zoe, or the eternal life of God. 45 others are either the duration of life, the manner of life, or the conduct of life. So the word life, how is it used the majority of the time? to describe the eternal quality, characteristic of the God kind of life. It's called zoe. 
Life, listen to this word, in the absolute sense. What does it mean, absolute sense? 100% pure. Not tainted at all by sin, sickness, or disease. The cure for all sin, sickness, and disease. The eternal cure for death and damnation is receiving the experience of God within your soul. Now, when Jesus came to give you this, in what measurement did he come to give it to you? John chapter 10, verse 10. I have come that you might have what? Life and have what? Life more abundantly or life just sparingly? If it was abundantly, it would be much. It would be, you know, all we need. If it's more abundantly, how do you describe that? Now we're talking about more, thank you, more than enough. God's not El Chipo, he's El Shaddai. <laughs> the God of more than enough. Now think about this. He came to give you so much life, you couldn't use it every day, every moment of your life, and outuse it. When God gives you something, it's on an eternal level, not on an earthly level. So the eternal life of God that you have is all you're going to get from now until eternity. Which means when you get to heaven, you won't have more of this. It's just you won't have the earthly life to try to tell you you don't have it. So without having a hindrance to mar your perspective of the eternal life that you have, in its pure form, you'll experience it in heaven, but you can experience that right now. Jesus showed us that it was possible. Isn't it interesting that Jesus showed us that having a physical body did not hinder him from being able to use the life of God with skill and effectiveness? This is awesome. Jesus never healed somebody and said, you know, I could have done a lot better job if I didn't have this body. Which means what? God knew what he was doing when he made the physical body like he made the physical body. So that it would be a place where the spirit, as a container, the physical body is where the spirit could express itself through your physical body. And what's the number one way God wants to express himself through your physical body? To heal it and keep it 100% healed, healthy, and whole for the rest of your entire life. If there's a germ, bacteria, virus, some type of sickness or disease in your body right now, hearing what you've just heard is more than enough to kill every single sickness and every single disease. You realize, don't you, that every sickness and every disease is death in process. You do realize that. When somebody has a cancerous tumor in their body, it doesn't mean that their whole body is affected. It might mean that that particular part is affected. That's why doctors go in and try to remove that part to save it from spreading to other, what, parts. If an individual would look just at the mathematics of having some type of disease in one part of your body, but realizing the greatest part of your body still has health in it, you could kill the part of your body the disease in that part of the body that actually is, is afflicted. But what we'll do is, is we'll let this small little part of our body that the doctors say there's a problem become the mountain by which we view the rest of our body and we'll let that little part kill the rest of us that's completely healthy. It's a matter of perspective, is it not? We don't want to take one of our fingers off, but if one of the fingers were off, couldn't you still function with the other nine? It's very interesting how perspective ruins people. I've watched this. I've watched people. Do you know there was a guy that ran marathons, and he had a little bit of pain in his chest. Now, he could have just told himself, man, I was breathing extra hard because it was so cold out. I used a whole lot more energy than I normally do to run. I'll just go ahead and take an extra day just to stretch, and I'll be fine. 
But what he did was he went into the doctor. And then the doctor told him he had cancer. And he couldn't even walk out of the office. The moment he heard he had cancer, he crumbled to the floor and they had to remove him in a wheelchair, which they went from the wheelchair to the bed and within a week he was dead. And he just got through running a marathon. If the doctor would have told him the cure for this is to run another marath marathon. We don't really know what it is, but what's a pain in the chest? It might be a pain in the rear the next time. <laughs> and if the man wouldn't have believed himself, what do believers do? We believe. What can you get if you believe? All things. Does it work in reverse? It does. Real quickly, I want to share something to you about this amazing divine life of God, which is the DNA of God. Come on, do you know what they're doing with cell stems and all that kind of stuff nowadays? Do you know what they're doing? They're, they're transplanting cells. We just heard a testimony of a little bro of a brother and the, the younger brother who's getting ready to die with cancer and the older brother was a perfect match for stem cell transplant and they did so and then after the transplant and all that took place they had to find out how much of the one brother is now the other brother because the brother who gave was the match is giving his cells to the younger brother but those cells have the possibility of taking over to make the younger brother become the older brother. And when they did the testing, they found out that he is actually a duplicate of the older brother. And since the older brother doesn't have cancer, he no longer has cancer either. Now they're going to think like each other, do like each other, as though they were twins. Interesting what mankind is experimenting with. Where do you think they got this? From Jesus. When you accepted Christ as Savior, God brought eternal life into you and it became the new strands of your DNA until you literally are a match perfectly with Jesus. You are one and the same with the Christ. No, He doesn't try to take your personality and make it anything but who you are. But everything about your spiritual condition is 100% Jesus from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And Jesus has never in his entire life for 33 and a half years on the earth and all existence from there on out ever considered himself to receive a sickness or disease but that it would die instantly because of this life absolute life life in the absolute sense has anybody ever heard of absolute cold have you ever studied it google it you'll find out it's not like 60 degrees below zero it's hundreds of degrees below zero in absolute cold there never will be found one trace of warmth. In a millisecond, any warmth instantly becomes absolute cold. Absolute cold means it takes over anything that isn't. And it instantly becomes what absolute cold is. The life of Jesus that's in you. This substance from another world is absolute. Put a cancer cell in the life of Jesus, instantly dies. Put dementia and let it touch the life of Jesus, instantly the mind comes alive. Laid hands on a man struggling with dementia in Minnesota. Lynn, it was at that men's conference, if you remember. The next morning, he said it was like somebody 
took the shades of his mind and pulled the string. Boom, like that, he was back. Perfect in his mind. Absolute life. Years ago, and this will be my story I tell to end this morning, just giving you some thoughts. Years ago, I was ministering, and you know, I don't always think of my illustrations. That can be dangerous because then sometimes they come, you know, spur of the moment. And sometimes they're good and sometimes they're not. And so I was talking about this life, and I got over talking about it, and I said, I, I thought to myself, I want to somehow make an impression about this. And so I started talking about, you know, being a child of the 60s and how the sci-fi effects, you know, special effects in the 60s were really bad. Some of you remember them. You know, when you'd see like a Martian movie and they got shot, you know, first of all, the Martian would be dressed up kind of like I was dressed up when I had to as a little boy and I pleaded with my mother and father, please, with tears, don't make me do this. Don't make me do this. Right at Christmas time, where the, the mall was filled with people, I was the tin man <laughs> in the Wizard of Oz. And we all sang and had our parts. And they spray painted me down and had things all over me. To, and I had a funnel that you use for gasoline, spray painted gray on my head with holes in it and a string attached to me. And while my dad's attaching it to my head, I looked and I said, please, don't make me do this. That's about what this Martian looked like in this one movie I saw. And when he got shot, these clumps of green blood came out, which you know it was flour, water, and food color. I mean, that's as far as we were back in that day with our inventive, creative minds and what we could do on screen. But I use it as an illustration that the life of God in you goes into your blood. Don't you remember that over in Leviticus 17? The life of of the animal is in the blood. That's why the shedding of blood reveals life for another. And Jesus being the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the earth, when, he, when his blood was shed, it was Zoe that came out to do what? To pay the price of every single sin and redeem him. While the devil thought he was just bleeding from head to toe, he didn't realize the significance that the life was in the blood and in three days would atone for the sin of the entire world. Our sin sent Jesus to the grave. Romans 4.25 But our justification brought us out. His justification brought us out. And I shared that. And there was a little girl there that had multiple sclerosis. She was about 16 years of age. And she walked like this to come into the service. And she was real bright-eyed. And she'd listen. And I laid hands on her after I talked about that green blood. And then she went home. Six months later, I'm in a meeting, and all of a sudden, someone comes running up to me and goes, hey, you remember me? <laughs> Real dramatic-like. And I just looked at her and looked at her. I said, you're the little girl that had the multiple sclerosis. She said, I am. I said, well, tell me your story. Look at you. And she said, well, you laid hands on me. I said, yes, I did. And she said, actually, I got worse for the next three months. I said, oh. <laughs> Amen. I said, what happened? She said, well, I went from walking really badly. I said, I remember how you walked. She said, I went to the walker. I went from the walker to the wheelchair. I went from the wheelchair to the bed. And the doctor said, you'll die in this bed. She said, a month went by. Two months went by in that bed. Worse and worse, life seemed to fade from me. And all of a sudden, I thought of the green blood. And the more I thought about it, the more it reminded me that there's life in me. It's from Jesus. And that green blood kills anything because it's absolute. 
two weeks of thinking about that blood, I went from the bed to the wheelchair, from the wheelchair to the walker, from the walker, and all of a sudden on the second week, I jumped off the walker and started running. And here I am. Went to the doctor. They checked me out and they said, there's not a trace of multiple sclerosis anywhere in your body. I am completely and wonderfully healed. I want you to know, thank God today, the eternal life is in us. And if I had more time, we could break this down and show you that even as God, John chapter 5, is the source of life, Zoe, and he gives it to whom he will. He, it says Jesus became the source of life, and he gives it to whom he will. And Jesus came out of the grave, and he said, all power has been given unto me. Zoe, the very life and nature of God. And he said, now I give it to you. This life we have is for you to use. I want everybody to close your eyes for a moment and just think about the green blood. And I want you just real simply to say within your heart, I release the green blood to flow into my hip, my pancreas, my kidneys, my liver, to flow into my mind into my ears, into my eyes, into my hands, into my bones, into my muscles and joints. I release this life that's in me to overwhelm my body in Jesus' name. Just for a moment before we close our service, and actually you get out around 1130 usually, so actually we're doing pretty good. We can minister to a few people here. Folks, didn't, remember what Jesus said? John chapter 7. He stood up and cried out at that feast. He said, out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. What was he talking about? He was talking about the spirit that had not yet been given but was going to be given. And, of course, we know the 120 were in that upper room and they were praying and staying before the Lord and all of a sudden, oh, glory to God, all of a sudden, there's a suddenly happening in this room right here. Who has been in pain? Whose hip like we said a moment ago, was really struggling, that all of a sudden, suddenly, suddenly, you can tell something's already happened and you're healed. Why don't you get up and testify and encourage the rest of us? Who in here can already tell something's happened? Now, how do you release the life of God? Talking about it. When you talk about it, you believe in it. When you believe in it, it begins to flow. We used to sing songs, you know. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well. Remember that? Within my soul, spring up, oh well. And make me whole. Spring up, oh well. And give to me that life abundantly. And then we'd sing another song. I've got the life of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. I've got His life, His nature, and His ability. I've got the life of God in me. I've got the health of God in me. I've got the health of God in me. I've got His health, His nature, and His ability. I've got the health of God in me. The more you sing those songs, the more you fill your thoughts with what it is you have. Just like that little girl, she went to the bed and was ready to die and started thinking about the life of God. What began to happen? She began to stir up that life. Paul told Timothy, I know something's in you because I laid hands on you, but you've got to stir that up. Without stirring it up, is it possible that there's something that could cure you, but it lies dormant? Come on, I came down to this bottom section so I could see the whites of your eyes. Brother Hagin used to say that. <laughs> and I can see that you're listening. 
How many of you is it registered on? There's a bunch of healings in this room. We'll lay hands on folks. But you understand, laying on the hands, that's still Old Covenant. You say, well, Jesus told us to lay. That's right. Jesus knew we would still need that connection physically in this dispensation. But we don't need that connection physically, the laying on of hands. Why? The old covenant was about you touching Jesus. The new covenant's about Jesus touching you. Come on, even in my Baptist church. Some of you remember that old song? He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Dear lady, come on down here, and let's just let the Lord touch you. What's God doing in you, ma'am? He's touching you right now. Where, where, where were you hurting that you can tell the Lord's touching you? In that hip over there? It was hurting you before? If you'll grab my hand and you can still hold on to this dear one right here. Is you a daughter? If we take about four steps that direction, you'll almost want to run. Let's just take four steps. Come on, here we go. There it is, right there. Now how's that feel? pretty good isn't it yeah let's turn around and just walk the other way this is pretty fun God's healing you right now in front of everybody amen well there you go isn't that awesome now let me stop right here when's the last time you've done that You don't remember. Amen. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, well look at what the look at what the goodness is doing to her right now. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Come on, we'll we'll walk over to my wife over here so she don't have to walk very far. <laughs> Because now you can run. Let's lay hands on her. Thank God this life will actually bring development back to the mind. I remember this one little six-year-old boy, Wisconsin. We laid hands on him because he had the mind of a two-year-old. Well, that was on Friday. During the weekend, the family noticed all kinds of different things about him. So on Monday, they took him back in to get him retested. He tested out as a six-year-old. They put him back in school on Tuesday. I got a picture in my phone of a little boy that was Down syndrome at eight years of age. He's not Downs anymore. He doesn't even look Downs. God touched that little boy over the period of a year, and his face completely changed. He looks just like his mama. His cognitive ability went from being what it was to 90, over 95%. He's back in normal school. So you got to hear some of these stories, like that man that woke up the next morning at that men's meeting, and his mind, boom, it was back. You got to hear some of these stories so that your heart can open up to the bigness of what God can do. Otherwise, we look at certain things that, well, I've never seen that before. Have you ever seen that? But Well, I guess not. And now we're, we've sunk so low and we're so depressed, we can't think that God could do anything. And yet here He is, the God that already in Christ did everything. God actually believes that He paid for this mind to be sharp to the last breath that she breathes in the name of Jesus I, re I restore unto you the mental capacity to think in Jesus wonderful name and to remember and to walk 
whole and healed. Wow, wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, no, because you don't have any evil in you. Now run. Now run. Hallelujah. And you can sit right here on this, this front because you're probably going to want to run again. You shall be known as the running healed lady. Who else? Come on, we've got just a few minutes before my microphone goes off. Who else in here? Her hip. Look at what God did. She's running. How, how old is your mother? 82 years of age. Yes, ma'am. What's the Lord doing for you right there? You have what now? Yes. How long are you going to keep it? So by the time you get out to the aisle and come up here, you'll already be wanting to yell and scream and holler that you're completely free. Get out right now. Nope, wrong way. Come on up here. Amen. Now move and jump and shout in the areas where you had all the pain. Yeah, but now look at what's happening. Look at what's happening. <laughs> look, you had pain in your shoulders, didn't you? But now push against my arms. Push, push. Look at that. You don't hurt a bit, do you? No. Now where else did you have it? In your feet? Stomp with me. They don't hurt anymore. Oh, come on. We have to run a little bit. This is a running church. This is a running church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You just got free from arthritis. Now you know somebody would say, well, I wish that would happen to me. Don't come by wishing. Look at what she did to get that. She raised her hand. I mean, even when we were in elementary school, we had to learn to just raise our hands. Who else in this section? I think this is a good section. That man right back there. Yes, sir. What's, what's up with you? So you had neck pain and head pain, and, and for how many years? Many years. Where is it now? It is completely gone, right? Is that what you're saying? Because I can't totally hear. Can someone help me? Okay, thank you. That's a real good interpretation there. And then, and then but what about it now? Oh, come on up here. I'll thump it right out of you. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, he's got a perfect forehead for just a little tap. Two neck surgeries? Are you ready for it to just go? Now, let me ask you a question. Is it possible that it could just go? Is it possible that my bad story about green blood, that that actually caused that woman multiple sclerosis? to activate the life of God in her and she went from the bed to the wheelchair to the walker to running around like a normal 16 year old well then the Lord right now in the name that's it of Jesus Christ wow there's the neck pain gone just look at how much you're free amen you're free move that head all around amen amen shake it real good try to make it hurt amen lift up your hands with me and let's just thank him that he just sets you free this morning Ha, 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 ha. And out of his belly flows rivers of living water, speaking in an unknown tongue. Amen. Check it again and see what the Lord's done. Not what he's going to do, but what he did. Amen. Let me ask you a question, just serious. On a scale of 1 to 10, for whatever you came down here with, let's say it was a 10 when you came down here. Where is it now? Okay, let's do that again. Meaning, yeah, what you had when you were there, let's say that was at a 10 level. Has it come down any now that you're here? Down to two. Amen. Is two good enough or do we need to go to zero? Amen. So why don't you stay there for just a moment while I work with someone else and just worship the Lord and know that I'm going to share something with you. 
I believe this with all my heart to be 100% accurate. Pastor can call me out on this if I need to be. Anything you do where you interact with God, it releases the life of God. Any activity where you are interacting with God will release the life of God in you. Not just reading the Bible, but reading the Bible with the Holy Ghost. In other words, having an open heart as you read to glean from the Scriptures, the life of God will begin to flow. As you begin to meditate, Himself took my infirmity and bore my sickness. The life will begin to flow. As you pray in other tongues, the Holy Ghost and that life will begin to flow. So when I shared with him, just meditate and just worship God, what's taking place? Something is working within him. There was a time where God said to me, and this is all in closing, it's 1117, we're going to get out right on time. Where the Lord said to me, and besides, you're getting out way before the Baptist. I grew up Baptist for a long time. They get out at 12 o'clock every service, and we're going to be out at 1130. You'll beat them to your favorite place to eat without a doubt. No, this is really, really important. The Lord told me one time, He said, study verbs. You know why I was happy? I was happy because I actually knew what one was. I mean, that would have been horrible. Lord, what's a verb? So what He was saying was study action words. Like, for instance, when Paul said, said, for God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think according to the power which works in you. A working of the power. Out of your belly shall flow. Rivers, rivers are moving. Living water. Flow means they're moving. What does that seem to indicate? The Holy Ghost is moving. He's manifesting. And He wants to move in us. How come if He's moving, we don't see evidence of Him moving? We have to move with Him. Now in just a moment, ma'am, come on down. In just a moment, we're going to open it up. If anyone here needs to be ministered to with the laying on of hands, we're going to lay hands on you. We've got one service left. Let's get all we can get and watch this place get so healthy here in Longmont, Colorado that you'll be known for the healthy church. Can anybody say amen to that? Brother, I checked that out again because I believe you've gone from two to zero. And remember, believers believe. And what happens when we believe? Anything is possible. Isn't that right? I'll be right back with you. Sir, what about you? Yeah, balance problems, eye problems. Come on up and move up. If you want to have ministry to, come on right up here and form a line. And we'll minister to you. Aaron, if you'd come on up here with me. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. What's happened to you? Amen. She said, MS, multiple sclerosis, has been with her for over 31 years, and she's just started walking again. Well, thank the Lord you've just started walking again. Did you listen to my story about that little girl? Wasn't that encouraging? You could feel something in your legs. Do you know that life is in my hands right now and in my wife's hands? That life is in your hands. And we're going to stir it up and release it. That's it, right, that's it right there. It's flowing in. That's the life of God. That's what cures you. That's the, I'm sorry to say it, but that's the green blood right now going into you. It's from another planet. It overtakes multiple sclerosis and it kills it. And all those little bugs and disease that attacks your body, it literally causes it to die. So your body becomes normal. That's what's happening right now. Jesus name be filled with God's life saturated in your bones and muscles and joints with God's life multiple sclerosis dies in you in Jesus name and you walk free this day every step will only get better now you're not alone. You're not walking out of determination, 
out of willpower. Now you're walking out of Jesus' power. Amen. Something happened. Something happened in her. Something's happening in her. <laughs> you can tell, can't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stronger and stronger and stronger. Amen. Just, just while we're ministering here, just keep getting up and keep getting down. And then when you want to take that for a stroll, take it for a stroll. And here's the cool thing. You won't take it for a stroll too long before you'll realize, I don't need to hold on with both hands. And then you'll be holding on with one. And then you'll be holding on to your husband's hand like you're walking you know, down the street like a normal walk. And then the next thing you know, you're running on your own. Why? Multiple sclerosis has just met the absolute zoe, life of God's nature, and multiple sclerosis has died in your body, and you're being returned right now to complete wholeness. And this isn't a hope and a prayer. This is eternal life. Do you have eternal life? Do you know as a Baptist boy, at four years of age, I got saved. And you couldn't have beat it out of me that I wasn't saved. And if anybody said, I'll beat you up if you say you have eternal life, I'd have looked him in the face and said, start beating because I have eternal life. I knew I had it. I just didn't know what it was. I thought it was going to heaven. It's not just going to heaven. It's God imparted into your life and body. You get to walk with His legs with his bones, with his muscles, with his joints. And there's not one flaw in him, which means there's not one flaw in you. That's eternal life. Does it give you hope? It's the initiator of all hope. Jesus didn't say, I came to give you a healing. No. I came to give you soundness of mind. No. I came to give you religion. No. I came that you might have life, zoe, and an abundance. Because when you get eternal life, you have his provision. You have his healing. You have his wholeness. You have a sound mind. You have it all. And we're learning a little bit late, all of us, myself included. We're learning about this. But we're going to learn it so fast that it's going to take the world over. And we will, before Jesus comes, turn the world upside down. Guaranteed. Get up and get down. Watch how easy you get up and get down now. You're not doing it alone. You're not doing it alone. He's in there. What we put in you with our laying on of hands, it's working. Fast as fast as you want it. Well, I think you ought to be excited by now hearing that. <laughs> What's the Lord going to do for you? Oh, thank the Lord. Well, you won't have to have a shot after we give you a shot of this. In the name, that's it, Jesus. Fire, Shemakadere, Sina, Torah, Sana, Taka, Sada, Deshte. In the name, Bradoste. Take this healing to your eyes and be loosed and free from this moment. Jesus is your healer. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, thank God. I put my hands on you, brother. And it's impossible for you not to be well from this very... That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Hallelujah. Your healing is here today, sir. It's here, right here. Take it like you do these straps. Amen. Pull yourself up in a sense by your bootstraps and take it and run with it because the Lord has touched you and healed you in Jesus' wonderful name. Wow, wow, thank you, Lord. It is absolute. It's 100%. There's no flaw in it. No, no, no. Ah, look at you. Amen. Yeah, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything that was, it no longer is. In the name of Jesus, that went right into you, dear lady. What about you? Ooh. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, you want another shot of that, don't you? Amen. Amen. 
Yeah, well, I saw myself just tap you in the head, just like this, watch, just like that. I know, but just like that. Amen. Okay, well, he, you know, if he said that to you, that's what he said to you. Amen. And I'm going to deliver it the way I saw it. In the name, fire comes on you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can a brand new body come that quick? Yeah. What's he need to do with you, sir? Stroke injury. Do you know the Lord sees you free from every condition of a stroke and from having another one? He sees you free. And when we place this anointing on you, does somebody have any oil? Pastor, do you have any oil? The last time I said that, someone gave me a vial, and I made them go get me a pitcher. And I poured the whole pitcher on. No, I'll just take a little bit. I just need a little bit. But I was just letting you know, I've actually poured a whole pitcher on a girl with fourth stage leukemia, 16 years of age. I wanted her to know by being so saturated with that oil that the Holy Ghost was on her and she was now healed and she was now well. She went back to the clinic four days later. The doctor said they couldn't find a trace of leukemia left in her body. Jesus had removed it, taken it all away. Amen. Brother, that seems, that seems pretty nifty right there. Is this uh, oil right here? Essential oil? All right. I'll tell you what, what do you got over there? But this is, this is good stuff. What do you got? Hold on. What is it? Essential oil too? Okay, okay, I'll take this. Thank you, brother. Amen. Hey, before you leave, take a little bit of this. Lord, thank, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, well, if I had that picture, you'd, you'd be the first one I'd, I'd dump it on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name. Sir, now we take a little bit, put a little bit on your finger, just like mine is. Ah, <laughs> the Holy Ghost is getting ready to jump on you. So how do you know that? Well, uh, oil is like a, a type of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, so I placed that. Oh, glory, smear it right on you. You've got the perfect head. You'll see it all day. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I release unto you your healing and your victory. From this moment, be healed and be whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As long as we got this oil, I may make, make good use of it. Give me your hand. The back of it. You just put that on there, Aaron. Put your hand on her. In the name, be loosed from this dizziness. I'm tired of it too. In Jesus' name, amen. God now sets you free. Yes. Yeah, you better laugh. That's exactly why I moved your head around like that. Because you wouldn't have wanted me to do that. And I wanted you to see that you can move it from side to side you can flop from side to side, and you can run around backwards, sideways, front ways, any way you want to. Jesus just healed you, and if you want to make sure, then look at your hand. It's greasy, because there's oil on it. The Holy Ghost is on you. Now get up, amen. Hallelujah, now walk with me. Yeah, amen, I don't care if the first few steps look dizzy. Now high five her. No, don't hug her, high five her. No, we're still walking. Amen. You always listen to what we're told. Amen. Now, guess what we're going to do? No, not yet. We're going to walk with our legs together. Right now, you're walking like, you know, something's wrong. You know, like I, that's how my little little granddaughter she's got a diaper and she walks like this okay legs way apart and everything you don't have to do that for stability now you can walk just normal there you go 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 it's all starting to work <laughs> you know you're a lot of fun <laughs> what's your name Geraldine Geraldine yes amen amen 
I'm going to remember it next time, too. My wife and I are starting to remember names for the first time in our life. Yes, we are. So, Gerald, Geraldine, we will remember you. We will remember you. Now, this afternoon, all I want you to do is rejoice knowing that Jesus is all over you and what you had is gone. And he's tired of it too. So now you don't have to actually endure this anymore. And if you want to, take steps of faith. Abraham took steps of faith. So that would be to stand up on your own multiple times. And then to step if you need to hold onto a wall and see that Jesus is your healer. Until you're confident enough to realize I can take two or three steps all on my own. Don't have to worry about falling because he touched my equilibrium today and set me free. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Come on, there's a few more people. What about you? You do? Okay. Going to put, put all kinds of greasy stuff on you. Aaron, put some on. Me do the all? She don't want to do the all. Put that on you right there. And we lay hands. Ow. Wow, wait a second. Chomp down on your, on your teeth right then because I felt something actually happen. I felt something happen. The moment I start to move it around. What's, what's actually happening right now? Is it? Amen? Is that what it normally does? Does it hurt right now? If it doesn't hurt, would it normally hurt? No? Okay. Lord, I thank you again. Just another little touch of that presence to this young girl. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay here for a moment. Just begin to work with your jaw. Watch it all disappear, okay? Yes, ma'am, are you ready to receive? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you can, if you can live with it, then that's fine. Amen. Put your hair up like this and just put that on you. In the name of Jesus, we anoint you with oil. The presence of the Holy Ghost now comes upon you. And this eternal life kills everything called osteoporosis. And Wow, I felt that right now. In the name of Jesus, arms are moving. Amen. Pain's leaving. Something just happened in you. Amen. The Lord just touched you. Start to move around and see. You're not the same woman you were just 30 seconds ago. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can. You can get down. You can get back up. You couldn't, yeah, yeah. Amen. Well, well, the Lord's touching you right now. Look at what you're doing. Keep doing. Keep doing. Stand on your head, anything. Keep doing more. What about you? Injury to the arm that won't get better. We're going to lay, go ahead and tip that. Put that on you. Now, as long as we have the oil, we'll use it. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm sensing God do stuff like immediately. So there's something wonderful taking place. Sweetheart, what about you? The jaw. Still popping a little bit? Amen. Just stay right there, okay? Amen. Mama? Pain? Yeah? Yeah, we won't use this. Yeah, Aaron, if you'll... Go ahead and give me this. If you'll put your hand on her, get her to put her hand on her own side. And, and Aaron will put her hand on her. All right? Now we release unto you God's life. This eternal life we stirred up. And thank God it's so absolute, it won't fail ever. In Jesus' wonderful name, be healed today and free from the pain. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you so much. Amen. Lift your hands and thank him that it is changing. Father, we thank you that this is changing. TMJ means nothing. Amen. Just like MS means nothing. All these letters don't mean anything when Jesus is our answer. So we focus on Jesus. Thank you for his life. We set you free in Jesus' name. Amen. Now do me a favor. Don't think about it until 3 o'clock this afternoon. In other words, don't try and move it around. Just leave it alone. Go about your way. And resist your mind trying to tell you. See, it popped right there. 
Not until 3 o'clock this afternoon. Will you do that? Okay. What about you, sir? Your hand. Let's put some of this stuff on it, all right? Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the anointing oil. We command the bones and the muscles and the joints to release this hand in G. Well, amen. 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 We start to release this hand in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, everybody. Why don't you lift your hands for just a moment, those of you that remain. I know a bunch of people have already left. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful blessing. Amen. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name for Brett. Hallelujah. That we start to move the hand and it returns in perfect health. In the name of Jesus, everything about this mind that controls the nerves. Amen. Controls the muscle contractions. We command to be normal in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Start moving that hand, brother. There's anointing on you. There's oil on you. What about you, sir? Your whole body hurts. Losing your hearing. Amen. I put a little oil on you, and I lay hands on you right now. In the name of Jesus, I command all the pain to leave this body. Ears from this moment. That's it. You begin to hear. You begin to feel. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I, I, I bet you shiny new diamond, something's already changed. Start checking yourself. You don't hurt all the way over anymore. Your ears are opening up. I can see your heart, brother. You're wide open to God. There's no restriction. You're not bound by what doesn't work. You're actually encouraged by what does. That's what I see about you. Amen. Test something about your body. Yeah, shake my hand. Squeeze. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Shake this. Shake this hand. Squeeze. That's right. Shake this one. Squeeze. That's right. See? Life is coming back into you. Shake it again. Squeeze. And you got, you got a life ahead of you, brother. Amen. 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 Without pain. Do you know there's nothing that you've done that Jesus hasn't already healed you from? It's awesome. What about you, man? Yeah, you too? All right, let's just touch you. Put a little bit of this on you. From now on, that anointing is on you to heal your eyes, to turn this condition completely around. Say it with me. Jesus is my answer. From this moment, everything changes in me. I believe this with simple faith. And because I believe... All things are possible. Amen. Hallelujah. What about you, sir? Yes, so something pinched back here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Maybe it's all connected. Well, I don't know if that's the same thing, but it's... Well, I just thank God right now as I lay hands on you that Jesus is your healer. Why doesn't everybody just stand up in the congregation? We're ready to leave in just a second here. We've got just a couple more. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Sir, give me your, give me your hands right here. Now start to bend and see that there's something going on in your legs. Amen. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand any of that. I don't understand any of that. Just do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He does, he does. Move your neck around and move your legs around and see. He's just touched you. Get over on that side where you're so thrilled with so thrilled with what he just did. You can't help but be what he's what he said you are. Okay? Amen. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, put your hand out. Just like this. I put that oil right there on your hand. I put my hand on it, and it represents the presence of the Holy Ghost. Now, is it possible that everything that's been hurting you is leaving, and Jesus is touching you right now? 
Yep, yep, it is possible. Start to see it right now and start to feel it right now. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord God, thank you. I wish you could see this dear lady's face right now, everyone. Amen. <laughs> Ooh, look at what he's doing to you. He's, he's removing it all right now in his precious name. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> You're a lot of fun. Amen. <laughs> He's doing it, isn't he? Right here, right now. Check other areas and see what the Lord has done. Well, now it's off. She said it's on and off. Well, it's off now. Hey, how are you doing over there? Tell me real quickly for everyone to hear, what kind of, what kind of change are you sensing the most? The legs. Amen. Sir, would you grab that side and I'll grab this side? Let's just let her take some steps here and see that she's not stiff and you are not in pain anymore. And what has begun is now actually bringing change to your body. You don't leave here the same. How's that feel? It's different, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. You're gaining your strength back, man. This is what it's all about. Hey, man. Now, let's just do this. Let's sit her right here on this stage. Perfect place for you to sit. Everybody, would you lift your hands for just a moment? There's just a couple of more that we're ministering to. Come on, let's just worship the Lord for a second. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Well, I just minister to you. Be filled. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. And be free in your prostate. In Jesus' precious name. Na da brusta baburus de nege di galakari a fovonamon. Tervedusta riganya don de begenda de kirista la golosta. I've run to the beginning of the Galilee, I told you, I had to love God to be able to make this day. Oh, Ramon, Bregeri, I have to love God to be able to make this day. Thank you, Lord. Filled. That's it. That's it. That's it. You can speak right now. Que Ramon so nombró de este regista. Lift your voice and begin to speak with me. Para vieri ando do Ramon de beginning ya dege. Er visto do Ramon a bene vida la magana dar a din de este di begeri rodogo. Hallelujah, for the Holy Spirit is upon you. And the presence of the Lord is in your lips. And out of your belly flows rivers of living water. And this he spake of the Holy Ghost that abides in you. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Go ahead and speak more. Hallelujah. Join you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Aaron, put your hand on it. In the name of Jesus, we pronounce you clean and whole and free. In the neck, in the head, all that area, Jesus has just set you free. Yes, young man. Okay, your jaw has been? Yeah, and so the jaw has been hurting. Could I have your hand? Is it okay if I put this little oil on your hand? You see it shining? That represents your healing, okay? So today and right now, all that pain's going to leave you. Can you move it around and see? How's that? It is, isn't it? Could you do it again for me? How's that the second time? 
It's getting better, isn't it? Isn't that fun? One more time and watch it all leave you. There. There, right there. You can tell your mom how you feel. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Pastor, if you'd come. Amen. Come on, as Pastor comes, lift up your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what Hallelujah. the Lord's done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Amen. Jesus. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you for all you've done today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are all right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We got to do one more thing. It's not very spiritual, though. We, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have a drawing. How many of you put your? It's for the the to win a hundred dollar gift card I got in my pocket. And so, uh, uh, how many of you filled out one of these? Turned it in. Okay. All right. This is for the Texas Roadhouse. Okay. He stuck it way up high, so he didn't want me to cheat. Kathy Bud. Kathy Bud. Oh, come on. <laughs> Kathy, congratulations. Okay, let me get it out of my pocket here. I should have had this ready. I was hoping nobody would win. There you are. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Do you care if my wife and I sit with y'all? On Tuesday night. <laughs> All right. Hey, be blessed, you guys. Come tonight. Was this awesome? Yeah, come on. Was this awesome? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So be sure you come tonight and y'all be blessed and be nice. Okay? And I believe you're my healer and I believe you are all I need and I believe you're my portion and I believe you're more than enough for Jesus, you're all I need. I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all.